Hi, welcome back to Post TV. We're here with Steve Kaliski from Gen Arts. They're here at the show with some existing products, FR5, and also with some products that they acquired last year, and there's some integration going on, and also some new pricing. So I'm going to let Steve tell us what's new. Thanks, Randy. It's great to be here. So at the show, for many people that are coming to the show this year, they're seeing Sapphire 5 for the first time, especially After Effects users, Final Cut Pro users. GPU acceleration is one of the biggest things with effects. Effects is usually rendering intensive. Sapphire has always had great performance, but with CUDA acceleration, we're getting like seven times improvement in light rays. Our lighting effects are really one of the hallmarks that people you know, go to Sapphire first. Also, we made several acquisitions over the, the last year and a half, and we've rolled those out in terms of Monsters GT. We had acquired a company called Speed6. They had a product called Monsters. We GPU accelerated that. We improved the workflow and the user interface, and we're showing that off in the booth, um, as well as Particle Illusion, which was a 2D particle system from WonderTouch that people love because of the diversity of presets and ease of use in terms of being able to create really cool visual effects really easily. So um, I know you like to talk trends. Uh, what have you been seeing at the show? And also, um, I don't know if you heard about you know Final Cut X. I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, so I, what I thought was interesting this year, last year was all about 3D, and 3D is still is really relevant. But what I've seen both with it, some of the things that Adobe announced in, in CS55, and then yesterday with Apple's uh, presentation, the sneak peek of Final Cut Pro, is that it's a really big. Um, emphasis on workflow and removing a lot of the tediousness and things that, you know, you know, the way I like to say it is like allowing users to spend more time creating and less time thinking. And so people are, it used to be with After Effects when I worked on Adobe that you gave people 150 sliders because people wanted, un, you know, un, what we used to call unprecedented tweakability. Well, times with, you know, shrinking budgets, shrinking deadlines, people just don't have the amount of time to spend. Not everyone can spend days finessing um, Natalie Portman's eyebrows for a movie. Some people just have to get their work done, but at the same time, their clients are expecting the same production value. So the trends I see this year are really about workflow and I thought I was very impressed with what Apple did with Final Cut Pro both in terms of um, in many ways catch up to things that have been in a lot of the other NLEs and so addressing those things and at the same time really focusing on giving people an efficient workflow and allowing people to not deal with the tedious things allowing people to just work on a streamlined fashion and it, and it dovetails really nicely to what we're doing at Gen Arts in terms of I think you're going to see a lot of new things coming from us in the second half of the year in terms of where Sapphire, that people love Sapphire for the breadth of tools that are in there. There's over 200 different types of tools. A lot of people think of them as Legos. They can be combined in unlimited ways. Each effect has hundreds of controls, but not everyone needs all that that horsepower and so we're looking at ways that we can deliver customers the same quality that they see in Sapphire but bring to them tools that are more accessible and uh, but at the same time meet their clients or exceed their clients demands. Steve, uh, I know GenArts has products that work with so many of the different NLEs and visual effects systems. I don't know if our viewers realize how many there are. Can you rattle off the different lines that our support that you guys support and make products for? Sure. So I, I hopefully I'll remember them all. Um, so, so we have a the heritage originally Sapphire was developed for Autodesk platforms. So we support all the Autodesk platforms from the Flames and Flares and Smoke on Linux and Smoke on Mac. Um, our Sap Sapphire, when you buy a Sapphire license for Final Cut Pro, it also works in Motion as well as a, the same license works with After Effects and Premiere. So we support the Adobe applications. We support the entire Avid product line. And then um, Gen Arts was al also a, a leader behind an open plugin. Typically, every, we, we, the reason why it's challenged for a, a software developer to develop tools for all these host applications is they each have their own APIs. And so a bunch of uh, vendors, both on the plugin side as well as uh, software providers, said, let's, let's create an open standard called OFX. GenArts was one of the founding members of the OFX Association. And so by host applications supporting OFX, that allows us to support tools like Sony Vegas, Foundry's Nuke, um, Quantel, um, the assimilate scratch, uh, film light, and 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 on and on, and then there's more and more uh, uh, companies looking at using going to OFX because they don't want to take the time to develop their own API and then have to recruit developers like GenArts to develop for them. So by standardizing on OFX, it's a win for the developers. Allows us to derive efficiencies in what we do, and it also is a win for the users because they can now have the same plugins across all a, a, a greater variety of host applications. Well, 
Thank you, Steve. Always a pleasure to talk to you. That's it? <laughs> well, well, what do you, you want to talk about some politics? Or, no, I, I think we're good. Okay. We'll see you soon. We'll okay, thanks. It was great seeing you both. <laughs> okay.